voice of a whole bunch of characters in the Transformer franchise. Galvatron, this planet is contaminated. This I don't like! I could have shown that pilot some really fancy flying! When I get loose, you're gonna be snake pie! Get off! Get away from me! Slingshot, he's on top of you! They're well built, resourceful. Wait! Look! The warriors are blocking all the doors. There's no way we can get out of here before those fuel stockpiles explode. Hey, you guys, are you here to help? Never seen you guys around before. I'm Orion, Orion Pax. Oh, and that's Dion. He's my best friend. <laughs> Very funny. And this is Ariel. Keep away from her. She's my girlfriend. And as Orion Pax would say... You're watching In Conversation with Amber the Fangirl, ATF. Enjoy. Hi, guys. Amber here. And today I'm talking to someone who has had an astound astounding career in voiceover. Now, I I'm not going to lie, like, not just voiceover, but real life work as well. Live action. He was the game show host of I'm Telling in 1987. He was the voice of Warden Waddlesworth in Darkwing Duck, Tunnel Rat in G.I. Joe the Movie. Yabot, Facet, and Scumgo in Monchichis. That's Hanna Barbera Monchichis to you. Um, a lot of additional voices in other cartoons. He was Raphael in the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Most importantly, he was Skydive, Dive Bomb, Rampage, Orion Pax, and Private Dixon in Transformers. My guest is no none other than Laurie Fazzo. Hi. Hi, Amber. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Lovely, thank you. Yeah, well, thank nice you. to be here. Yeah, it is. It is great to be here. Well, even though it's it's practically now tipping it down outside where I am, it's been horrendous weather the last oh. few days. So, um, where am I? Where are you? Where are you calling from? I am in Los Angeles. Oh, I'm jealous. Personally jealous. I and the sun is just burning through the marine layer now, and it'll probably be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit here today. Wow, I'm jealous. It is so cold over here. That's why I've had to put this onesie on, because I'm absolutely freezing. I mean, it's it's been thunderstorm lightning in the past few days, and it's just been horrendous, really. So, no, yeah. I'm sorry. Come it's to LA. I want to. I, I wish I I wish I could. I I don't have a passport, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm. I was hoping to go this summer, but obviously the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was meant to go last summer. Pandemic. Hopefully, 2023 will be the year I come and see everyone. Yeah, it's it's time for us to get back to it. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Now I just really wanted to say. Um, I admire a lot of your voices, um, especially your Transformers voices, because obviously I'm currently going through a Transformers phase. Um, obviously, I've been binge watching the original G1 cartoon throughout the pandemic. Um, and I just really wanted to say, wow. I'm pretty much jealous of everyone who's been in a Wally Burr recording session, because with all these people, <laughs> Frank Welker, Corey Burton, Peter Cullen, Ken Sansom, Scatman Crothers, everyone mm -hmm. was there. Wow. What was it like? It was fun. It was fun. Wonderful, wonderful work. You know, I had I had come from uh, 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 New York. I was doing a Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing Godspell. I did it for years. And uh, I started doing voiceovers for radio commercials in New York. There really wasn't much uh, animation being done in New York. Uh, so I was doing radio commercials and did a lot of voices and this and that. And I came out here uh after the show was over and uh i just started auditioning for voices and gosh it was fun you know really great i mean you don't have to shave you go in a little booth you don't have to wear nice clean crispy clothes and you just be silly yeah. and it was fabulous that, that's, i agree that's why i've gotten into voiceover i mean i'm not sure you probably can't see but on my wardrobe i have a picture it's a little picture of me with a helicopter mm -hmm. corner printed ride and i voiced I, I did the voiceover for it if you put the money in it moves you can hear my voice on the ride um wonderful that, that was exhibited last year in london just before the pandemic started so thankfully i got to see it in person well, yeah 
look at me. That's great. Did you audition for that? No, the uh, the company who made it are very close friends with our family. So they just asked, would you like to be the voice? I was like, yes, please, definitely. Because I've loved these corner That's points great. and ride things for years. So I always Good experience in every interview because I'm one of those people. But unfortunately, <laughs> the company who made it recently went bankrupt. So I think there's only one in the UK that were going to be shipped out worldwide but there's literally only two left now in existence well only two made just before the pandemic so yeah well so that'll make them really special you know yeah it'll it'll be a rarity there's one in the uk years from now some some teenager will talk to you about being the only voice of that that would be really (laughs) cool i wish i wish that wish that would happen to me to be fair i mean there's only the one in you never know the one in the UK is up in Bradford, which is about two hours away from me. It's up north. The other one is in Iceland, yeah. in um, oh. Reykjavik. I think that's how you say it. It's like in like the biggest shopping centre in the capital of Iceland, I think. So, yeah, it, it's quite good to just be heard Mrs. Worldwide just holding the globe in my hand. <laughs> it's just it's just absolutely amazing. Good for you. Anyways, that's... Yeah, okay. that's fun stuff. Yeah, definitely. Anyways, enough about my career. We're here to talk about you, Laurie. Now, ah. let's talk about Transformers. Now, you played Skydive, let's for let's for say. Um, to be fair, I'm watching Transformers at the moment, and the next episode I have to watch is the key to Vector Sigma, which is the episode where the aerial bots are born. So, what was it like being an aerial bot, along with like air raid, slingshot, silver bolt? Fire flight. Uh, it was great fun working with Wally Burr and working with all those guys was, you know, just a joyful thing. You know, Wally could get a little cranky every once in a while, but he was great. Uh, uh, I didn't have like a big character. I he, Wally would call me in for, well, this guy's in just for this episode, or this is another guy that he's a guard there. We need, you know, and I come in and do two or three voices for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> one day I was doing two or three voices and uh, while he was directing and he said, okay, uh, guy number two, I want you to come in on top of guy number one when you're talking, go. And I did it. He said, no, I said, don't let him stop. Talk over him. And I did it. And he said, what's the matter with you? And I said, Wally, I'm doing both voices. I can't talk over myself. He said, oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, Take two. <laughs> Apparently, Frank can actually do that. I mean, when he's in, obviously, a scene yeah. that plays most of the Decepticons, apparently he can do that thing where you talk over another. So that is really cool. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. definitely. Wally was great. It was great to work with those guys. Uh, hanging out in the green room, you know, waiting to go in. You know, ah, you go yes, in one the at a time. Room. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, these are crazy people. These are the guys that in school, they were the guys that sat in the back of the classroom and said, rawr, 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 and imitated the teacher's voice and did all that crazy stuff. And there were like 10 of them in a room with you. So it was maximum insanity and extraordinary talent. It's fabulous. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you have a funny moment from recording Transformers? Uh, other than that one with Wally, no, that was my funny moment, I think. Uh, otherwise it was just get in, get out. You know, he wanted to do it fast. He had, uh, you know, that was a weekly series and a lot to do. It's hard putting it together during the week and getting them ready, you know? So yeah, you go and go. And also you played Dive Bomb and Rampage who were, um, I think they were Predacons. Yeah, they were Predacons. I'm just having a look right now. And yeah, they were series, series three. Yeah. Yeah. It appeared in the, um, Five Faces of Darkness, and Dive Bomb was an eagle, Rampage was a tiger, and wow, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at it, wow, wow, Joe Lee was in there as well, wow, he was like Razor Claw, that's so cool, so wow, <laughs> that's so cool. You know, we just saw, when we were doing the characters, sometimes we were able to see a drawing of what the character was going to look like, mm-hmm. sometimes Wally just explained it to, to you, described the character, And other times you had no idea, (laughs) you know, he would say, okay, he's a little one. Okay. He's a big one. Uh, You know, so you just go with it. And uh, then, then they, they draw it. Yeah. 
I'm having a look here. Rampage appears in Five Faces of Darkness, part five. First appearance. First speaks in Nightmare Planet. Now, Nightmare Planet was actually the first episode of Transformers I ever watched. Because I remember, I remember, I think, yes, I did like the G1 series in the pandemic, but I didn't properly start watching it until about summer last year when I got the full box set. Uh, but I do remember mm-hmm. watching Nightmare Planet on the internet, and I actually have a VHS somewhere on my on my stand over there. It's of not, it only has the Nightmare Planet episode on it because I I don't know why. But it's an actual one that was released in the UK. It was like released by Tempo Video, Abbey Home Entertainment. So yeah, that is quite cool. I can't say that I've ever watched a full episode. I've yeah. glanced at them, but when they were on, I was really busy, and you know. Uh, uh, I, I didn't watch them, <laughs> but I've watched them since and they're fun. I went to a, a, a TEFCON a conference about two years ago here in uh, LA mm-hmm. and uh, I was astounded. I had no idea that so many people liked the Transformers and the place was crowded and people asked for autographs, you know, I said, really autograph and uh it was it was wonderful it was wonderful and i learned then and i didn't know i did the voice i think it was one or two ep- episodes of uh, orion pax orion and pax the, i was the guys just gonna be from, to him yeah, the guys from uh uh tefcon said you know he's the guy who became uh uh optimus prime or you know yeah he became the guy so so co- real collectors are into this character so you're going to have a lot of people wanting to meet oh, you yeah. and i did oh yeah so it was very interesting really good people that there come interesting nice fun definitely. great yeah you should come to tf nation which is like the uk version of tf con you should it's really good we've had a lot of guests we were gonna have peter cullen here last year but obviously the pandemic shut it down so uh. Peter has a very low voice. Yeah, basically, Laurie, you became Peter Cullen in the G1 show <laughs> because the Ryan that was in that episode. Yeah. I, believe, yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, and then Alita One was played, oh. was called Ariel, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I remember one day, uh, speaking of Peter Cullen, we were sitting in a room. I, it might have been a Wally studio, but we're just sort of in rows of chairs, just waiting for something. And uh, uh, I was sitting behind Peter Cullen and uh, Frank Welker came over and said, Shh. and he sat behind Peter Cullen and started talking to Peter in Peter's daughter's voice. And <laughs> Peter fell for it like a ton of bricks. It was great. Wow. That's the kind of idiocy that went on. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. Well, I know Peter has four children. Um, I know he has a daughter called Claire, so it could have been Claire. Um don't know. Yeah, well, I, I have tried to reach out to Claire to get to Peter, but obviously, you know, no luck. But hey ho, we 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 go on. That's what we do. Um so yeah, wow. Well, I, I I need to make a list of everything people tell me about Frank and they just bring it up saying, Oh, can you do this or can you do that? And just ask him just to do all these little requests. And he's like, How did you He'll find do this out? And he'd be like, Well, I'm not telling you. <laughs> and then like just, just in the back of my head, just all the other voice actors I've spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Um, about, I can't exactly remember what episode it was. Ryan Pax, his debut episode. I believe, yes, Elisa Wong was called Ariel, voiced by Samantha Newark. Um, do you remember working with her? Because you went on to voice Gem in Gem and the Holograms. I, I do not. Um, as I said, we usually went in by yourself. Oh, and did you? And you weren't with the person you were talking to. Oh, I thought you recorded the an ensemble. Oh, Mm, I don't think so. I think it was uh, pretty much, unless there was a big group, you know, battle scene or something, and he needed all that stuff. But uh, I think in order to control the sound and keep the audio at a level that he liked, Wally liked to do one person at a time. Ah, uh, well, I, I never, I never knew that because I always just because from what I heard, everyone um recorded as an ensemble because they'd all be sat around like a sort of like m- like microphone stands and the microphones and then Wally would be in the booth telling people what to do and yeah I'm just wow that is literally a fun fact sometimes sometimes we did that but often it was just uh, going one at a time uh, or maybe it was just me and he didn't want me to even talk to other people 
people. So, you know. <laughs> oh, bless you, Laurie. Uh, what else is there to talk about? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so let's talk about Monchichis. Now, do you remember doing Monchichis at all? Monchichis, that was Hanna Barbera. That was yeah. early on. Uh, 83, I think. Actually, it was. I. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, do, 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 uh, geez, geez. I had to write, little, type up my uh, furry creatures. resume because I didn't remember when I did stuff. 83, on. yeah. Oh, yeah, that was great. That was Yabbit and Scumgar and Facet. Yeah. Uh, uh, when we auditioned, you know, you uh, when you do those cartoons, you do the voices first and the artists draw them afterwards. Yeah. So they had a concept for a character. And uh, you go in and do it, and they remembered what you did, and they drew the character to your voice. Uh, this character Yabbit was a was a little character that kept saying, uh, "Yeah, but uh, I don't want to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that's good. Uh, yeah, but I, you know." And so, mm-hmm. and then there was Scumgore, who was such sideways guy, Ooh. you know, talking like this shit. And and they said, oh, "Okay, so I'll draw the mouth to match this guy." So it was it was great. They, uh, they let you sort of create the character. I mean, it was written, but you created vocally and, and they drew him for you. Yeah, that's really good cool. Stuff. Yeah, and I also had a really good voice to our cast as well because I think, yeah, you worked with Frank and Peter on that. I looked it up before and they were part of the cast. So you did work with them prior yeah. to Transformers. Pardon me, I'm sorry. They did, you did work with them prior to Transformers. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, we all, you know, there was a time in the early 80s when there were like 50 actors who did every cartoon in town. You know, yeah. it was just, you'd go from one to another. I was not at the top echelon of that, but I, I went to a lot of them and you'd see the same people all the time. Uh, it was even true for animated films at the early on in the time, but just about that time they started to say, you know, we could get celebrities to do these voices, you know. And we said, oh, great. Yeah. So, That's what they do you know, nowadays. they would get Robin Williams and, you know, and, and wonderful, talented, uh, big stars to do the movies. So we did less of them. Yeah, they're doing a lot more these days. I mean, if you look at the new Space Jam movie, um, Kath Susie's not voicing Lola. Um, it's Zendaya who's doing it now. And also the new Scoob film that was released last year. Um, they got rid of everyone from the original voice cast, like everyone who performs the main principal characters, apart from Frank. They only kept him as Scooby Doo, but he was replaced as Fred with Zac Efron. Well, there's only one Frank. You don't replace him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, well, I mean, he's he's playing Scooby. Like, why can't you let him play Fred as well? But I'm just glad that they kept him in. Because if they got rid of him completely, that would have devastated me, honestly. Yeah, they have to remember what their fan base likes. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. Uh, what else is that? Oh yes. Um, Let's talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the film. Unless you want to talk, keep talking about Monchi Cheese, that's fine. No, I no, Mutant Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was wonderful. I was uh, um, doing some looping. Do you know what looping is? ADR. Yeah. I had a loop group, and I worked with other loop groups, and I was doing a lot of that in the eighties. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite things to do, and uh, one of the loop group coordinators recommended me to the director for uh, uh, Raphael. They were replacing the person who had done it before, uh, and uh, I uh, I read for it, and uh, you know he was he was you know just a New York guy, you know. Come on, yeah. Leo, let's do it, eh? You know, so um, it was wonderful. That's one where you worked individually, you know, you. Uh, went in and and uh, did the voice but you had to match the mouth movements of the turtles and for those that particular iteration of the movie they were giant animated puppet heads on top of actors heads yeah and the mouth movements were very basic they couldn't do much more than open and close so you had to fit the voice into that mouth you know doing that um, 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 and yeah. uh, it sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But now when they start doing the CGI stuff, yeah. it was, uh, you know, it was perfect. But I worked with wonderful people, Robbie Wrist and uh, oh, 
I can't, uh, uh, Adam, uh, uh, I can't remember the guys I did it with, but that was a great time. We did a lot of interview shows. We did a, something with uh, Barbara Walters. There were three sets of <clears throat> Ninja Turtles. There were the dancing turtles, yeah. there were the fighting turtles, and there were the acting turtles. And they were all different people. So uh, um, you try to adjust the voice yeah. <laughs> for each one of those, those uh, characters. It was great fun. And yeah. uh, and uh, it was terrific. I, I liked it a lot. From on the and people still want, you know, I still get mail from people saying, uh, would you please sign this turtle, uh, you know, uh, box for the toy and Aww. all that stuff, which I, which I try and do as assiduously as possible. Yeah, yeah. But that was, that was really good fun, yeah. I bet it was. Yeah. It was not a blast. And it, right around that time, my son was born. And he's just turning 30, so that was 30 years ago. Wow. <laughs> Time has flown, like, because I usually remember yeah. 1991. Was your son born in 91? Yes. Wow, yeah, yes. I usually remember it's been 25 years ago, not 30. It's 30 coming up now, yeah. I need, I need to bunk myself in the head because I literally can't, I can't get that to sink in. Wow. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What is it about this voiceover and cartoon stuff that intrigues you so much that makes you uh, dive into it so deeply? Um, I think it's because I get obsessed with like cartoon characters or cartoons. Like let's say for example, well, my re recent fixation is Transformers. So I'm like, I have to contact everyone from the show who is still alive. And I talk to them about <laughs> it. And like, I speak to them about how, you know, thank you so much for cheering me up. And just, I just think these cartoon characters are just real. I know it sounds Ooh. silly, but you know, it helps me cope. Then, then we did our job. That's good. We did indeed. <laughs> Another look at Wikipedia page for TMNT right now. Brian Tochi, to Tochi. Brian Tochi, yes. Tochi, Robbie Wrist, Adam, Adam Carl. Carl. Yeah. Yes. And you as Raphael. And Robbie Wrist. Kevin yeah. Clash as Splinter. David McChown as Oroku Saki. Michael McConaughey as Tatsu. And Frank yeah. Wilker as Tucker and Razor. And a bunch of other stuff that <laughs> they didn't yeah. even talk about. Oh, David Warner was in it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay. That, I have to give that a watch. I have to give that a watch. Oh, please. You haven't seen it? I'm. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Says you replaced. And, and, uh... and the director was Michael Pressman, who's a great guy and a really good director. He's done lots and lots of stuff. Yeah. It says you and. Uh... Hmm. That's a bit funny. Um, it says you replace Josh Pays as the voice of Raphael in the film, but it says someone called Trome as well. I don't see anyone with a last name called Trome. That's well, odd. That is odd. I have no idea. No idea. I know I replaced someone. They use someone different up for almost every uh, uh, film because you know they they didn't pay you a a lot of money and people would ask for more money and they'd say no go away we'll get somebody yeah so that's what they did you know yeah i guess so um what about gi joe the movie what was it like to work on that because that obviously had that that had a similar class to transformers and obviously done by the same people sunbow marvel toy animation and then obviously that was wally like burr wally burr yep so a lot yeah. come with transformers wally burr called me in one day and he said i got this character He's got like one line, but we don't know what that line is. So come on in and read and see if we can come up with something. So I came in and I, you know, did a few things and I, I did a line. He said, oh, that's a good line. Wait a minute. Let me talk to the writers. <laughs> okay. Now, do you give the writers permission to use that line? You just, uh, I said, sure, guys, go ahead. I said, okay, done. <laughs> So that was it. Tunnel Rat had one line, as far as I can remember. Can you remember what the line was? Yeah. Uh, I think a bad guy got shot and Tunnel Rat says, hey, he zigged when he should have zagged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they should, have had, they should have had more screen time. I wonder why he had that one line. No point I think I probably it. stole it from an old World War II movie or something. To be honest, if you only had one line, there was no point in letting him speak. But then again, no, they should have let him speak because it was by you. So, yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of glad they gave him a line then. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, what else is there? 
but usually I usually I usually just go like this and I'm just like oh what else is to talk about like I'm so unprepared but then I've got a lot of topics just floating inside my head and I'm just I can see that I'm just and then I just take it out yeah you know one of those like um gumball machines you put the money in and then you spin the crank and then it just comes out of the flap that's just literally <laughs> just me right now <laughs> I get a 50p piece oh yes yeah 50p yeah I don't know how much that's a equivalent how much is that equal to in America is that a, I don't know I don't do math what's 50 oh, what's 50 cent in America is that a dime is that a nickel no, 50 cents is 50 cents. A nickel is five cents. Oh. Dime right. is 10 cents. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> well, this is this is literally just turned into an education lesson. Feel free to tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I need to know a lot about American money because obviously I'll need it if I go to America. So first time leaving my home country, never been abroad before. So it would be a big step uh, for me. W- that's great. You'll you'll do great. Oh, yeah. thank you. Look forward to it and, and, and enjoy it. I look forward to it as well. It's different. It's different. Yeah. Um, so, Laurie, um, do you still voice act now or are you retired? And if you are retired, what have you done since then? I'm, uh, I'm pretty much retired. Uh, uh, the business slowed down a lot. Um, oddly enough, it, is, it had little to do with age as opposed to on-camera stuff because yeah. most of it, at my advanced age, I can still sound fairly young and small and little and all that. Yeah. But, uh, and, and most voice actors can't. Um, I just, uh, it, the, the work slowed down and I thought, you know, I, I got to do something that is a little more meaningful. And uh, I, I became a special education teacher in the LA Unified School District. Wow. And I did that for about 10 years and then retired from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was an extraordinary, wonderful experience. I, uh, I, I already had a bachelor's degree in English and I had a master's degree in drama. And I took a, a course of about a couple months to be a substitute teacher. And uh, at the end of that course, they said, does anybody want to uh, volunteer to do special ed training? And I said, me, me, I do. And uh, uh, I did, and I worked the summer at a special ed center, and I really liked it. And, and, and I think they liked me, and they offered me a job. Uh, and there's, there was a program called uh, the District Intern Program, where you could go get your teaching certificate while you were teaching in the daytime. So at the age of my early 60s or mid 60s, I, I uh, taught all day and went to school at night for two years and uh, became a certified special ed teacher and, and got a job at the place where I had been subbing, you know, so wow. it was it was quite wonderful. It was uh, they were really wonderful kids, wonderful kids. And uh, this was they had special education schools then. They're trying to get rid of them now because so, they want the kids to be integrated into regular programs. Uh, this particular school catered to students with uh, severe to profound disabilities. And uh, it was a little different. Uh, most of my students were nonverbal uh-huh. and, uh, and uh, they were high school students. Um, and uh, there were some things we could do for them and some things we couldn't. The reason I stopped teaching, I think, is because a special education comes under federal, state, county, city, all these different sets of laws. And there's so much paperwork, so much paperwork that you have to do for each student. And, and it really takes away from your time with the students. The time with the students is the most valuable. And it's, it's the time where you can really, really help them. Filling out paperwork doesn't help them. And, and the fact that you know, most of these students, this was a public school. Most of these students came from, from low income families. And some of these families had two and three kids with disabilities. And, uh, and it was an extraordinary break for a working mother and or father uh, to just have their kids taken care of during that six or eight hours a day. So it was valuable at the base. It was valuable for that, giving their parents a little bit of time. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, to this day, I keep in touch with my uh, colleagues and oh. some of the, my students, actually. 
That warms my heart. That really does. Thank you. As Lovely. I come from an autism family, I have an autistic younger brother who has been non-verbal for most of his life. So we have grown up with it in the family um, because I have a wow. few cousins who are autistic. Um, so yeah, wow, you're you're a good man. You did a good deed. No, honestly, <laughs> I I I tip my hat. No, it was good for me. It was completely selfish. It made me feel good at the end of the day. Oh. Now, it could be a bit of a silly question, but did any of your students know that you're a voice actor? Did you tell any of them that you're a voice actor? You know, I don't think so. I'm trying to remember. I don't know if there was a real awareness of some of that stuff. I think some of them knew about Ninja Turtles because other people on the staff might have said something. Uh, yeah. But uh, it, it wasn't part of the, the whole deal. Yeah. Know? I would freak out though if my teacher voiced her own packs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just be going crazy for like, mom, mom, you've got to get letting people want to walk for the rest of their life. <laughs> so, well, that's you, Amber. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I'm just welling up with love right now. Just love, caring, hearts, man. I just, wow. How nice you are. I, I didn't even know you were a special needs teacher until you told me in that email. So, wow. wow. I'm speechless, honestly. I'm literally speechless. You're never speechless. Come on. <laughs> so what are you up to these days, then? These days, <clears throat> I'm doing a little gardening. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, what have you been up to during the pandemic, basically? Oh, uh, Brutal, you know, just trying to keep in touch with people, uh, you know, doing a lot of Zooming. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, I play a little golf every once in a while because I can get outside. Frank does as well. Yeah, I heard, I just heard that. Somebody just told me that. I didn't realize it. Yeah. Who, to who told you? I, I, just a quick one. No, I think it was Neil Ross when I watched his interview with you. I think it was. Oh, yes, he did. I think he mentioned that. it. Oh, and yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he used to do golfing quite a lot. And he also, he flies planes as well. He oh, does he? Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. He owns a BC something, Bonanza. So it's like one of them sort of, you know, small planes with wings. Yeah, it's a tw well, no, twin engine, a isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I don't know a lot about oh. aviation, but I have I have a friend who does. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of going to try and connect them with each mm -hmm. other. So hopefully that could work out. I, I don't know. You'll do it. You'll do it. Hopefully I can. <laughs> Is there anything else you're doing during the pandemic or just gardening and Zoom? Uh, I, I did a few things for the internet. Uh, uh, <clears throat> my, I did a few things for my son. He uh, is a creative director in the streetwear business and has, wow. has to do some, uh, <clears throat> some internet stuff um, that I did, I did some print work for other people in that business, mm -hmm. um, you know, which was great and fun and meeting new people, younger people, which was always good. And, uh, uh, but uh, mostly I'm taking it kind of easy. I try and go to the gym three times a week, but I couldn't for a year because the gym was closed. And so my den became my gym and, and I got very lazy. Oh. Or like that. I was quite lazy throughout, throughout the pandemic, to be fair. I mean, like, well, apart from this Bill Scott documentary I'm doing, yeah, I've just been really just lazy, just taking advantage of it. Right. Now, you first contacted me about Bill Scott. I did. Tell me about Bill Scott. I don't recall meeting him. He was the voice of Bullwinkle in Rocky and Bullwinkle. And the reason oh. why, obviously, I asked a lot of people who had done voice work in the 80s and stuff. And obviously, I noticed you'd done work in Transformers and a lot of Hannah Barbera shows. So I thought, could have could have bumped into him at some point. So I was just contacting, mm -hmm. just a chance of just contacting everyone and just asking, did you by chance see him at all? Gee, I didn't, I don't recall the name. I, I love the show. I watched it, uh, you know, all the time. And that was uh, June. Foray. June Foray and. Paul Freeze, William Conrad. Paul Freeze. Yeah. yeah, I thought Paul Freeze did all those voices. No, huh? No, no. He, he did Boris Badenov. Yes, Boris. Yes. yes, he did indeed. I keep looking up because it's literally raining, but I'm just looking at my neighbor's roof and just like you just see the splash and the raindrops and it's just. It's just one part of being autistic. You just watch something and then you're just completely focused on it. 
<laughs> I never need to show my blind sex. I might interview someone. But it's like just a, <laughs> It'll pass. Don't worry. Um, I'll probably just go and watch it after this interview because it's just. I, I don't even watch TV. There's nothing good on TV. All the good cartoons are over now. They don't air reruns. So I either just watch the rain or just go on YouTube and watch Transformers. <laughs> Well, you're very busy, and you, and you you remember all this stuff. This is very good. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, I've got a good well memory. Done. Thank you, Ari. I appreciate <laughs> it. Oh, bless you. Um, I'm trying to think now. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Unless you want to talk about anything else, or if you want to say anything. I don't think so. I I found I, and looking back in retrospect, I, I look at my resume, which I just printed out. <laughs> You know, I went to IMDb and said, oh, really? I did all this. And uh, <laughs> all right, this is all I did. And uh, but I noticed that a lot of my the bulk of my stuff has been entertainment for children. Yeah. And I don't know if I specifically wanted to do that or if I'm just kind of an infantile person and <laughs> gravitated <Yeah>. toward, <clears throat> toward that. <clears throat> but uh i uh um i just noticed that and then and it's uh it's kind of interesting to me uh, yeah. anyways laurie it's been fabulous to chat with you about your voiceover career and also oh i can i can we forgot to met i forgot to talk about i'm telling what was i'm telling like real quick i'm telling was a uh whew, that was a whirlwind uh that was a game show for kids <clears throat> one of the first ones it was like uh, a, a version of, uh, was it the honeymoon game or something like that, where husbands and wives would talk about each other. This was brothers and sisters, ah. uh, young kids. And uh, we shot like 26 shows in about five days. And uh, a lot of the kids were, were uh, you know, kind of ringers. They were, they were professionals but they came on the show with their brothers and their sisters and they played the game, you know, honestly and everything, but they had been on camera before. They know what they were doing. Uh, Patty Duke's kids were on. Uh, Mark Ruffalo was a little kid on it. So that would have uh, been like Sean Astin. And yeah, like, Sean was on. It's, it's sort of John Astin, Gomez Adams. The Gomez yeah, Adams. Yeah. Love him. A lot of those kids were, you know, were uh, on the show and they were great. They, they so helped because cool. they were relaxed and knew how to behave on camera and stuff. But it was fun to do, but it was a whirlwind. We really did five shows a day. And that was just uh, uh, reading the teleprompter and getting through. And there were a lot of special effects and stuff. It was fun. Yeah. How did you get the role of the host? Because obviously, I think this was 87, so you'd already done a ton of cartoon things before this. I mean, it's not the first instance the voice actor has been a host of a game show because Bob Bergen hosted the kids' version of Jeopardy Jep um, wow. around 2005. So I was just wondering, mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you get the role of host? I, I auditioned a series of auditions three or four times and, and then uh, recorded an audition. And, uh, you know, they just uh, they fell for it. <laughs> no, it must, it must have been an honor it must have been an honor They'd be like oh yeah you know what i'm going to impact right what <laughs> no sign him up sign him up <laughs> well i had done another kids show in in the 70s called marlo and the magic movie machine which was a cbs show <clears throat> i remember reading about that this morning because i was looking up your career it was first. very early it was about a guy who was a computer genius before anybody really talked about computers mm -hmm. and the computer was a big talking machine and uh, ah. but that was wonderful because uh, I did it for three years and uh, um, we did it in conjunction with NATO and uh, uh, the International Year of the Child they sent me around the world to do parts of the show in Australia and Thailand and I went to London and did you uh, oh Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was a kind of show. <laughs> I was living in New York at the time and it was on at six o'clock Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So the only people who would recognize me on the streets were cab drivers and hookers. And <laughs> I was up then. I saw that. <laughs> I did. I did rarely met, met children who actually saw the show. To this day, I still get uh, uh, mail from people in their 50s who said, I remember that show. I remember the theme song. And, you know, they hum and stuff. And that was wow. fun to do. Really I, had, cool. I was doing Godspell on Broadway at the time. They saw me in the show and had me to come in 
an audition and did another series of auditions, but uh, that was a busy time. I was doing a show at night and then shooting Marlowe on weekends, and, you know, traveling a little bit. So those were good yeah. times. Yeah, I'm glad of us. I asked about your live action career because I didn't really want to just talk about your voiceover career. And I was at the end, I was like, it's great talking about you, but no, hang on, I've just remembered the live action stuff. Oh, oh gosh, no. And so I just have to just quickly just throw it in and stuff like that. Um, so let's, 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 let's end on a high note, shall we? I was wondering if you could still do any of your voices from any shows. If I could do any of the voices from any yeah. shows? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Raphael. Eh. Hey, Leo, let's do it, huh? What are you doing over there, you guys? Come on, let's go. That was basically him. He was just a New Yorker guy. You know what, yeah, but, yeah, but uh, I don't want to do that too much because I would be, yeah, but, come on, well, oh, oh, all right. Yeah, but I, oh. come on, yeah, sure, let him do it. He's got a stupid name going, yeah, but, huh. And, uh, and uh, there you go. What about your uh, Transformers voices, like Skydive or, or Iron Pack? Skydive was basic. These were young, kind of, very. All right, yeah. you guys, come over here. Let's get in there and get them now. Yeah, because you know, they, you... they were very military. Uh, uh, the other ones were kind of futzed electronically, I think. Yeah, yeah, they were Predacons. That kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I was going to say, you were the you were part of the robots. Um Obviously, Charlie Adler was, I think he was Silver Bolt. Charlie, Charlie and I Silver Bolt. spent a Jeff lot of time McKay working together. Jeff was Firefly and Rob Paulson was Air Raid and Slingshot. And Rob, Rob Paulson and I worked together a lot. We did some, oh, what was it? It was a My Little Pony movie, I think, ah. where we played, I don't know, maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, where is it? We played a character with two heads. And he, we did the little little troll prince. That was the name of the movie. And we and we were one character with two heads, and we you know talked to each other a lot. I've been able to reach him for my channel. His publicist keeps saying he's busy, so he I'll is keep busy. trying. I I know I've been trying to reach him for about two years, and well, one day. If I see any of these people, Amber, I will talk you up to them. Okay. Aww. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Right. See really what I can do for you. Um, You're very welcome. Um, before we go, um, I was wondering if would you like to plug anything? Where can we find you out on social media? Uh, you know, I don't have a book. <laughs> I didn't mm. write a book. Uh, I no, haven't either. <laughs> That's two of us. Um, no, I, I uh, don't have a social media page, although I've been threatening to do it for a long time because I keep getting a lot of requests, especially from Transformers people. And, and some people now that are much older about the Marlowe and the Magic Movie Machine, because it's really, it was kind of a tiny show and it has a very cultish kind of small audience. So uh, I, I may do something with that. But other than that, I have no social media That's going fine. on. That's fine. Let's just but say. Thanks for asking. It's fine. It's, you're welcome. Well, in that case, we'll just say if you want to see Laurie anywhere, then just go to Los Angeles. Watch old stuff. Watch old stuff. Go to Los Angeles. Wait there for about six weeks and try and go through every single voice actor who lives there. <laughs> every literally everyone I talk to lives in LA, and I'm jealous. Well, well it, it used to be that you had to live here if you're going to do uh, oh, yeah. um, animation. But now the voiceover world, even before the pandemic, has become one that everybody has a microphone at the home and does work from home. It used to be just the big guys that uh, did uh, promos for movies. You know, this is a story about, you know, those guys all had yeah. studios in their homes for, for years. But now everybody can uh, work, do voiceover from home. I've done some, you know, it's, it's really yeah. wild. I've done some on my phone, which really? has a my iPhone has a very good microphone actually. And, and they said, oh, that's good enough quality, let's use it. I did my helicopter voiceover on a phone, don't judge. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right, it has good quality. Now I have a proper one, a toner microphone, so. Oh, snazzy. Yeah, I'm building it up little by little. So hopefully one day we'll just get one of those big ones that hang down and just be like, hello. <laughs> the telefunkins. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, Laurie, Lawrence. Yes. Which do you prefer to be called? Just a quick one. Well, Lawrence is my real name. Lawrence with a U. 
I got the nickname Lori because when my mother was pregnant, she was reading Little Women. And the boy who lived next door to the Little Women was the Lawrence boy, and they all called him Lori. Oh. So I got that name, which was which was not fun in upstate New York in the 50s when I was going to school. It's a girl's name. I, I know it's more of a, also a boy's name in, in England, but here it's, it had been traditionally, although I know a few male lorries. Yeah, I do. I do as well, actually. Well, to be fair, not yeah. first name, but last name. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's Hugh Laurie. He's a British actor. Yeah. Wonderful. Love I him. I love Hugh Laurie. Love him. So good. Fabulous. So good. Mm. Wow. That was such an amazing interview tour conversation well it is in in conversation with atf so of course it is conversation <laughs> it's been wonderful talking to you laurie thank you it has been wonderful Amber. you're welcome i hope to meet you in person at some point lovely i hope so too yeah definitely anyways guys thank you so much for watching this interview with laurie fazzo it's been absolutely amazing talking to him about his voices and his live action career as well if you want to see another In Conversation with ATF episode, please subscribe to my channel. Or subscribe, I mean, if I didn't stutter. Subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends. And yeah, I might just get another good voice actor on here at some point. You never know. Well, you could request if you want, but I can't I can't say. I can't say who's up next, though. I, can't. I always like to surprise everyone until the day it comes out. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another video. See ya. Bye. And cut.